Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Three new stories await you in our video today, starting with a warm-up story about a farmer. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. People kept parking on farmer's land. He did not take kindly to that. Not my story, but it was on the news a few years ago in my country. I even managed to find an article on it with a video to prove it actually happened. It's a simple story, so I'll keep it short. People kept illegally parking on this one farmer's land even though he asked them not to. One day he'd had enough, so he waited until everyone parked there and went to work, and then he took his tractor and plowed around the cars, trapping them on his land, unable to escape through the freshly plowed soil. Many of the people were PO'd and it made the news. And our second story. Try to stop me building one house? I build two instead and block neighbor's view. So I bought a house in the UK that has a large piece of land in the back garden. Almost all other houses in the street had houses built in their gardens, easily 90%, so I thought this would be a no-brainer on getting planning permission from the local city government to build one house. What I didn't anticipate was the neighborhood busybody curtain twitcher living next door to me. Let's call her Karen. K. K tried everything in her power to stop me. She organized a Neighborhood Residents Association hate campaign to complain to local politicians to prevent the planning permission being granted to build the house. She lied her butt off and talked about how if the house was built, traffic would increase and small children would be run over. Insane lies. I spent three years fighting Kay and the local residents association and the politicians, a long, painful, and expensive battle. But I won. Eventually, I got my planning to build one house. But what Kay failed to realize was that I was working with two other neighbors with land to the rear of their houses to ensure all three of us would get planning permission to build houses on our respective rear gardens. Neighbor J was the left-hand side of busybody neighbor K, I was on the right-hand side of busybody K, and neighbor M was to the right of my property, as below. J house, K house, I house, M house. After planning permission to build houses on our respective rear gardens was granted, I bought the land to the rear of J house. I then built two houses, one behind J house and one behind I house. Now every morning when Kay opens her bedroom rear window curtains and looks into her backyard, there is poking up a middle finger, house, to the left of her backyard, and a middle finger, house, to the right of her backyard. F you, Kay. Enjoy the view. Just imagine looking out your window one day and seeing a building flipping you off. And our last story. My boss accused me of stealing. Say goodbye to your position. About a year ago, I was working part-time as a server and needed to look for some extra work as the busy season had slowed down and I needed to make more consistent money. I wasn't looking incredibly seriously as me and my girlfriend lived in a condo owned by her parents and I had virtually no bills. One night, me and my girlfriend go to get dinner from a relatively well-known pizza chain near us. Inside, they had help wanted flyers practically spilling onto the floor. As I had multiple years of food service under my belt, I figured I wouldn't be an awful choice for some extra part-time hours. I mentioned to the manager that I was interested and would drop off an application the next day as I was dressed to go pick up pizza, which means a dirty t-shirt with my dog's hair on it, sweatpants, and flip-flops. Obviously not interview attire. We take our pizza and leave, and the manager actually follows me into the parking lot, practically begging for me to just do the interview with him. I thought it was weird, but I didn't think anything else of it and ended up getting hired. Now to give some backstory, when I say I have food service experience, I mean I have years of management experience all the way up to assistant store manager for multiple fast food restaurants. The reason I didn't apply for a higher level job was, as I said, money wasn't really a huge issue for me, and at the time I was just coasting and saving money to move out of state. After starting, it became very clear that my boss, who we'll call Howard, had absolutely zero idea what he was doing. It started off with the restaurant having zero daily, weekly, or monthly cleaning duties, which if you work fast food, you know is an absolute necessity. He would consistently not have the answers to questions I had and direct me to other employees, 
Simple questions like which side of the oven a specific pizza goes on and would smoke a cigarette every 20 minutes. The fact that the store had been open less than a year and was already in disarray speaks to how things were being run. I would come to find out he was a janitor or custodial engineer, as he liked to say previously, and had zero food service experience and somehow got hired to be the general manager. I saw this as an opportunity for me to get paid a little more for doing the same work I would inevitably end up doing. I offered to be his assistant manager as he had no one in his store who wanted to do it, and he had already asked me previously on the condition that it stay part-time because I really liked my serving job and didn't want to give it up. I told him that I would spend the time teaching him behind-the-scenes stuff that fast food training doesn't put in manuals or online tests, how to effectively make schedules, how to make weekly cleaning charts, weekly build-to orders for shipments, things like that. Then when busy season at the other job started, he could hire a full-time assistant, and he delightfully agreed. Me and Howard were the only two managers at the store with two drivers and five employees other than that. He would schedule me two open-to-close shifts in a row on his two days off so he could keep them every week and would justify it by saying he worked open-to-closes on the days I wasn't there since a manager has to be there to handle any of the cash from the safe. He never worked a single double shift. I worked this for a couple of weeks, and within that time, literally every single employee except for me, Howard, and a driver will call Jeff had quit, and we had hired new people. Me and Jeff got along swimmingly as we both were stoners into the same music and fairly laid back. We also loved to talk crap about Howard. He was also Howard's next-door neighbor, so he had all the dirt all the time. It became clear to me that there was some money issues going on somewhere as we were getting way more tips at the front counter from credit cards on reports than cash going into the tip bag for employees. This wasn't the easiest catch since he would save the tips up for two weeks to distribute them to employees on the week's opposite of payday. However, with the store being an unorganized mess, it was hard to know if it was money being stolen or simply numbers being put into the system incorrectly. One particular night, I was closing the store and was having some issues balancing the drawers, and the numbers weren't adding up. I called Howard, who picked up with a hiccup and a slew of slurred words. I explained to him the problem I was having, and he tried to walk me through it, but was either too drunk or more likely just didn't know the answer to my question. I told him I'd call his boss, who I'd met a couple times, and had mentioned if I ever had questions to call him. Howard immediately freaked out and said, don't do that. They don't want anyone to know how to work the numbers on the POS, point of sale, not piece of crap. Otherwise, they'll try and steal money. Knowing that was an asinine response, I said, well, that makes zero sense. How am I supposed to fix the problem if I don't know how it works? Then he said the words that started the snowball that would come crashing down on his whole life. He told me, Listen, you're asking too many questions about the cash. It makes you look really suspicious, like you're the one stealing money. I told him, whatever. I would leave everything the way it was, and he could fix it the next morning. Or at least try. I had to be careful because in food service, if stealing money even comes into question, most places will just fire you since they can hire any zit-covered kid to replace you. Because of this, and just my morals really, being called a thief is the one thing I do not stand for. So I hatched a plan with Jeff, who sided completely with me and had his suspicions for a while about him. Jeff knew that he was an alcoholic who could never turn down a night at the karaoke bar. Now, Howard was interesting because with how incompetent he was, he still tried to be the biggest people pleaser I've ever met. But in like a lonely and desperate way, he had practically begged me multiple times for us to go drinking together. Keep in mind, I'm 24 and he was 32 with a wife and two kids at home. We decided to both invite him out to a night of karaoke the night before he had a big meeting with his boss and the VP of training for the whole company. Of course, since me and Jeff both invited him, he couldn't say no. I actually ended up having a good time that night, not because Howard was good company, because my plan involved me buying Howard at least seven Jaeger bombs, a double shot of Patron, and a lot of beer. And I had to drink a fair share to not look suspicious. What a burden, I know. My girlfriend, who was DDing for us, dropped him off at home around 5.30 in the morning after a rather long smoke session at my house, suggested by me, of course. Needless to say, he did not show up to work the next day. He called and told his boss, who was already at the store, that his kid needed to go to the hospital the night before and that he was still in the ER. 
They called me at around 11 a.m. to come in and cover his shift. When I got there, I asked Howard's boss why he called out, and when he told me the reason, I said, Really? Well, I stopped by that karaoke bar last night for a few hours, and he was there. I wonder why he took him in and not his wife, and showed him a picture of an obviously effed up Howard and myself. They ended up firing Howard within 30 minutes and had offered me his position as I had more experience than him anyway and was already practically running the store and had completely taken over training new employees. I would have been perfectly content with him getting fired. I never imagined to have been offered his job. I was blown away. However, I still didn't accept the job as I didn't want the stress level the job came with. They say the best gifts keep giving. Well, so do the best revenge plots. Howard had his wife kick him out, ask for a divorce, and full custody of his kids. He went over to Jeff's house and sobbed and cried, cursing me for ruining his life just so I could take his job from him. I would have given anything to have been a fly on the wall to see the look on his face when Jeff told him that I didn't take it and quit the job shortly after. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.